Typically, in the scene of a human burial, there will be disturbance of the ground that is roughly rectangular in shape. But the disturbance will go well beyond the actual gravesite because soil would have been piled to one side and the surrounding vegetation will have been trampled. That whole area of the perpetrator's activity will be visible for weeks or even months afterwards. The grave itself will undergo a whole set of changes over time. Because of the displacement of the corpse, and because the disturbed soil has been mixed with air, you cannot get a flat surface, so typically there is a mound of earth over the grave. With rain and time, the soil will begin to level out, and then later will form a shallow depression. What will happen is that rainwater will collect there, and that is yet another sign that the ground has been disturbed. When any area of ground, such as a grave site, is cleared of vegetation, a process known as plant succession begins. Put simply, it means that the types of plants growing on the area will change in a series of steps over time. Most typically, the sort of vegetation that comes in first are the sorts of plants that are common along roadsides, such as hawkweeds and thistles and goldenrods. These, in turn, will be replaced by other species, such as the fast-growing fireweed with its bright purple flowers. As time passes, possibly a season or two, those early colonizers will be replaced by yet other plants, until finally, maybe five, six, seven years after the burial, the adjacent vegetation will completely cover the gravesite, and even tree seedlings will become established. It will be very difficult from the surface to see that there was ever a grave at all. But underground, the soil that was disturbed when the grave was dug takes much longer, decades in fact, before its density and appearance returns to match that of the surrounding undisturbed soil.